Hey there, YouTube. I'm back. I'm playing GM Sauerkraut in the three-minute pool. I have a Chipotle burrito waiting for me after I play this game. So I'm therefore very eager to try to win quickly. He's playing a line kind of funky with knight h6. I guess the idea is to go f5 very quickly. I'm just going to develop conventionally. Okay, I misunderstood his idea. It's to blockade the e5 square, I guess. All right, all right, let's see how this goes. I'm going to drop my bishop back, so I'm going to go knight d2 and then move this bishop and then eventually prepare f4. Bishop g3, or better go to, eh, let's go to h2. So he breaks with f5. Okay. Let's put this dude here. But yeah, this, this burrito is going to be really good. So everyone likes Chipotle, right? Mine was super long. I got there at 5.30 and the line was like out the door. And mind you, it's like freezing cold in Minnesota right now. People really want their Chipotle burritos. Uh, let's go 94. Does that make sense? Yeah. I had a big dilemma like whether to eat the burrito before or after this game. Because if I eat it before, and if, if you guys, by the way, for my international viewers, Chipotle is like a gigantic burrito. Um, you know, they're like, I don't know how much they weigh, probably three pounds each. Okay, that might be an exaggeration, but they're they're big. And you feel pretty full after you eat one. He can take my pawn on B2 right now. Let's see if he does it. But the motivation to eat it afterwards, of course, is that I'm not going to feel sluggish when I bring to you this quality, high quality, three-minute action. Okay, that's um, a move designed to... Try to win a piece, I guess. Because I have to go here. Otherwise, if I take his pawn, I get deflected. He trades queens and then he takes on e4. Hmm. I recall having problems against this opponent in the past, Sauerkraut. I think he's pretty decent. Well, he is a grandmaster, so... Uh... Rook d1, f3. I feel like I'm going to have to play f3 sooner or later. So let's just do it now. I mean, I like my position. I thought about playing rook a d1 to cover d4, but I don't think it's that big a deal if he checks me on d4. I want this rook here so I can invade down the file. Keep that open. open. Uh, let's take this way. And I think I wow, that's that's not good if I have to take with a pawn. Yeah, that's that's ugly for my. But if I took with a queen, he could take on b two. Now I'd fully expect him to put something on e five soon, like his bishop. All right, we gotta we gotta work for counterplay. Pre move that just in case. Huh. Hmm. I have to be careful now. Very careful. I'm going to go back. Because my bishop on f1 can get undefended easily. Is he going to invade with his queen? Like queen e3? See, this, this might be unpleasant because like now he's got rook f2 working after that most recent move. Uh... Let's go here. He'll probably just play h6, yeah. See, now if he goes rook f2, yeah, I gotta be super careful because rook f1, knight f3. Uh, I gotta do something. Go there. This is not ending well. 
and you just take on e4. Time. My check. position's collapsing. No. Uh, let's go check. Check. Hmm. Do I have check. some sort of perpetual? Maybe not. Oh, but if he ever goes to check. F8, I can check him. Check. Check. Okay. I might have like check. swindled a perpetual unless he wants to play for a win. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to try. A risky decision, Cotton. Check. Let's see if it pays off. Check. Let's see if it pays off. Check. Check, check, check. Ah. I think I'm going to get flagged. I did. Uh, okay, well, you know, I made it interesting at the end. He did have, like, 0. 0.2 seconds left. <laughs> so, you know, I I think I got kind of lucky when I had rook a7, or rook a8, rook a7. But, um, yeah, of course, if my time situation wasn't as it was, he would not have played for the win. Problem here is like it wasn't easy to mate him because his knight is so good on d3. His king is like actually like an extra attacking piece right now. Well, I've never seen this variant of the Benoni defense where black plays knight h6 and then more or less just blockades the e5 square. I mean, it seems kind of reasonable. I don't think my position was all that good around here. Maybe knight c4 is not the best move. Yeah, like his position is completely coherent at this point after rook a e8. I think once this happens, I'm on the defensive. Things got bad around here. So let's let's back up after c4. Maybe I had something better. Ooh, I'm already quite a bit worse. Wow, that's a surprising e -bell. I knew I was worse here, but I didn't think it was this bad. Yeah, he he kept control. Rook a6 was optimistic. <laughs> Check. Yeah, I think once his pieces start working in here, I'm pretty much busted. There's a nice tactic I was trying to point out to you guys. Um, in this position, like rook f1 seems like a logical way to try to get rid of some of his attacking potential, but Check. splat, knight f3, wins my queen. So... Hmm. Well, if I just go forward a little bit, I'm just going to use the engine to see where maybe I want to stray. This is the problem with using engines, right? Because, like, it says white's clearly better here, but no one would look at this position, especially a strong player, and say that white is, like, eight-tenths of a pawn better. That seems absurd. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Hmm. Says I shouldn't take. If I don't take, though, I was worried he would play f4 and my bishop on h2 would be forever out of the game. Yeah, knight c4 is perhaps not the best move. Knight de4 maybe is harder on him. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll have to check this line. All right, I'm going to go enjoy this burrito. Hope you guys are having a good day or evening, wherever you're at. And please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks, guys.